Okay, well, welcome everyone. Um, thank you all for joining us today at the, uh, for the Wusada Japan webinar on Western US food ingredients in the Japanese market. My name is Christy Zelinka, and I am one of the program coordinators in the Global Connect Department here at Wusada. As you may already know, it is Wusada's vision to see agriculture businesses from the Western US flourish in the global marketplace. In the last couple of years, there have been many challenges. We've sometimes had to postpone our normal activities, which prompted us to sort of think outside the box and still accomplish our purpose. While Wusada is swiftly returning to in-person activities, we've also adapted to the virtual world by offering successful virtual buying missions and creating new ways to connect our Western U.S. suppliers with foreign buyers. Virtual one-on-one -on -one meetings, chef demos, uh, restaurant promotions, social media campaigns, and more have provided excellent opportunities to build new relationships and provide education about exporting internationally. Another way we are assisting our companies is by providing relevant, up-to-date market data featured in infographics provided by our in-country contractors. The infographics are updated monthly and can be found on the social media platforms featured within this slide. It's a great way to get a snapshot of the segments growing within a market, new trends, updates on travel, and more. Again, you can find them on our social media platforms, so don't forget to follow USADA. All right, at this time, I would like to introduce our featured speakers. First, Ms. Lee Sangwa, Executive Director of RNL Associates, is Wusada's in country representative in Japan. RNL Associates is an organization based in Japan that has been working for numerous US and Europe food and beverage marketing and promotions for trade and consumers, serving multiple foreign clients in addition to Wusada. Our other speaker is Mr. Enrique Maison. He is the Deputy Director of the ATO Tokyo, the American Embassy in Japan. He has worked for the last five years with FAS USDA. So before our speakers start, we are actually going to start with a short video. Um, if for some reason the sound doesn't come through, that is okay. Um, it's mainly music in the background anyway, so we'll just watch it. It's just about a minute long. And here we go. All right, great. Thank you, Enrique, for that great video. And now we are going to start with you. So go ahead and take it away, Mr. Enrique Mazan, with an overview of the Japanese market. Thank you. Thank you again, Christy. And uh, good afternoon, everyone from the Western US. Um, it's really great to be able to have an op opportunity to speak to you today. Um, the Western U.S. Uh, is very close and near and dear for me as a Las, uh, someone from Las Vegas, Nevada, and having worked um, in our governor's office uh, there and helping our Nevada companies export. Um, it's, always, it's always wonderful to have an opportunity to be with you guys. I'm going to share my screen here now and uh, kind of walk you through uh, what you guys just saw. Um, please let me know once you guys see my screen. All 
excellent. So the uh, reel that you just all saw is uh, uh, Gochiso USA or Feast USA, uh, which is the Agricultural Trades Office uh, new marketing effort um, to coordinate and amplify uh, with US uh, industry partners in agriculture um, uh, to support and promote US food and beverage products uh, here in Japan. And so Gochiso USA allows us to connect uh, directly with Japanese uh, consumers uh, more effectively and allows us to showcase the wonderful, uh, diverse, high quality, versatile agricultural products um, from all the regions of the US, USADA, of course, being one of them. Um, and they've come to enjoy these uh, diverse products. And so, oh, sorry. As you'll see here, um, if you guys want to take a minute, uh, I've put in a QR code. Um, we launched GoChiso USA uh, back in, in February. Uh, we've been able to now reach uh, over a million uh, Japanese consumers uh, with ingredients, uh, several dishes, um, and uh, it's been an, an effective way, like I said, to connect with consumers. As you'll see at the bottom, um, some of the social media platforms that many of them are on, uh, we are using Instagram uh, because um, on average on these platforms, Japanese consumers are on there for approximately an hour each and every day. Um, so it's been a, a great way for us, like I said, um, to uh, introduce and uh, connect. Moving on, I, I, I think it'd be great um, to just briefly touch on the U.S.-Japan market. Um, U.S. agricultural exports in Japan um, last year totaled $15.6 billion and is our number uh, four trading partner. Um, and so we've, uh, I think, enjoyed uh, the USJTA agreement coming into force. Uh, which was in January 1st of 2020, and many tariffs um, and on products will continue to be reduced and be phased. Uh, so we, we really appreciate the strong bilateral trade relationship. I think it's important to give you all a good sense of kind of what's been going on um, and some of the policies implemented uh, as the government has uh, been navigating COVID-19. Uh, I just really wanted to point out uh, that Japanese consumers um, still are very strong purchasers and they consider premium products um, um, important into their, their diets. Um, and so, uh, as you'll see, some of the, the government of Japan policies in, in trying to continue to ease uh, some, some of their monetary policies uh, for the medium, small, medium-sized firms. And, you know, we've seen some recovery, particularly in the uh, HRI uh, segment. Um, and then I'll touch here briefly on overall uh, the Japanese market. You know, so I think uh, to kind of highlight what we've been dealing with is, you know, we have uh, a period of high inflation uh, and so uh, processors who manufacturers are very, very sensitive to that. In my previous slide, um, I, it wasn't on the slide, but, you know, just to give you an idea, you know, as of yesterday, the dollar to yen was one, 137.57. Uh, so one U.S. dollar equals one, $137.57 approximately. And so when inputs are, are costly, um, that kind of leads uh, food processors and manufacturers to consider um, some, of those, some of those things. You know, the, the Japanese food processing industry is one of the world's most advanced and sophisticated um, with 216 billion in food and beverage products um, in 2021. And so overall, each segment uh, whether it's food processing, retail, or the HRI segment, uh, you know, that represents uh, almost $1 trillion um, in bilateral trade for U.S. agricultural products. 
And so these food processing manufacturers are, are really uh, driven by large domestic entities such as Ajinomoto, Suntory, uh, Asahi, Kirin, Kikoman, and House Foods. And many of these large entities work closely with trading houses in Japan to obtain product information and they source uh, directly. Um, and many of these entities also have offices um, overseas, um, including in the US. And so as I just kind of mentioned, um, I won't read each point, but I think it's uh, very important to just say the some of the deceleration um, in economic activity, um, again, is uh, as a result of some of the uh, inflationary pressures on, on processors and manufacturers. Another key consideration I wanted to flag is, um, you know, compared to US, the US food and manufacturers, um, where price hikes are pr pretty, are passed pretty frequently and, and pretty quickly, um, that's a big no-no here in Japan. And so um, in the last three years, food processors and manufacturers have really had to uh, delay, but at this point, um, that just really isn't uh, sustainable anymore. And so, as higher input costs um, have increased, uh, we're now seeing for the first time um, those costs being passed down to the end user and are averaging anywhere from 10 to 20% uh, in increases. Um, so where does that fit with uh, your products? So um, let me stop sharing my screen here momentarily and provide you guys some, some products. So here in the market, I don't know if you can see, but uh, packaged, packaged goods, uh, sorry, I don't think you guys can see. I think I may have a blurred background. One second, there we go. So, some of these packaging, uh, some of these products that, that consumers are looking for are related into really the health, health and wellness. Um, Japanese consumers or Japanese uh, workers are constantly on the go, and so they're looking for healthy, healthy style meals. Um, this one particularly is uh, kind of like a chocolate snack, um, and it's uh, low calorie. This is a, a nut mix with some chocolate, and this is a product that reduces fat and sugar intake. And this is a energy bar. There's several in the US, but um, again, this will serve kind of as a popular midday snack for many uh, Japanese workers. And again, this is another snack and uh, its aim is to reduce stress. And then we have products like this. Um, again, just healthy, healthy type of snacking uh, is what we're seeing as kind of the trending type of products. I'm gonna share my screen again, one second. So individual sized, small package sizes um, is something that manufacturers have noted in the past three years. Um, consumers have had a, a strong, I guess, uh, liking to these and manufacturers are considering more, uh, more of these types of products um, and these smaller package sizes, uh, which is commonly sold through the retail. 
Uh, as I mentioned, current inflationary pressures on food manufacturers uh, have also had many um, to sustain or keep prices, uh, but again, uh, reduce uh, packaging uh, or make it into smaller packaging. Ready to eat uh, or Sozai um, uh, has really been also some, some, some of the trending uh, types of uh, products. Um, and so food ingredients would go into uh, what you see is commonly known as a bento box. Um, and a lot of this has been driven by increased participation of women um, in the labor force uh, due to very busy urban lifestyles. Uh, premixes. So uh, premixes are increasingly popular among the restaurants and supermarkets um, on uh, go into what's also known as home meal replacements. Um, so last year, uh, premixes totaled, uh, food ingredient premixes totaled 357,360 million metric tons, valuing at $698 million. Um, so um, another area for many of you to consider. Uh, frozen, fru frozen foods is also another, another area uh, which has increased substantially. Uh, and like, as I mentioned, uh, health foods. As you guys see here, uh, the market structure, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about that. Um, so typically when food processing ingredients um, are being looked at uh, by Japanese uh, entities or companies, um, you know, they're handled primarily through some type of a trading company. Um, and so as you'll see, um, kind of the, the flow, the distribution flow, um, it could go into several of these um, segments. Um, and so the question then becomes, well, how, Enrique, how do, I, how do I enter the market? It's a fantastic question. As international travel um, picks up, um, and I think uh, there's been a lot of excitement around that, um, each of you guys um, will be able to uh, come out um, and we encourage you to look at the supermarket trade show in Foodex. Uh, the supermarket trade show in February, uh, fe February 15th through the 17th and Foodex March 7th through the 10th um, to come and, and, and showcase your products. Many of the major uh, entities or companies that I uh, briefly mentioned um, will like to have kind of all these products uh, being showcased. Uh, that way they're in all uh, centrally located. Um, as it pertains to the Western region, uh, Kansai, the Kansai region accounts for approximately 40% of Japan's population and around one third of the country's GDP. And so the largest uh, processors there include Nippon Ham, Nippon Ham Ito ham, uh, Maradai ham, and major snack processors such as Izaki Glico, Roko Butter, Toyo Nuts, House Foods, and Osaka Foods. Um, as I mentioned, buyers in the food and beverage industry, they, they often prefer, again, to find new products at these trade shows uh, because it allows them to look at all these several products at once. Um, I just want to emphasize briefly that strategies for entering the market are going to vary depending on your product, right? And your characteristics, competition, and market environment. Um, you know, at the very basic level, um, you'll need to develop an export plan um, and understand the product and regulatory requirements. Um, and so we have a, a wonderful website, usdajapan.org, um, where you can review many of our exporter guides, including the uh, Food and Agricultural Export Regulation Report, or FAIRS, uh, for more detailed um, information. And I'll leave you just with uh, one, one item. Um, if you want to uh, come to Japan um, and get to know the market, um, I think you're, you're probably setting yourself up for success. Um, companies should visit Japan, especially after three years of uh, Japan um, kind of being locked down a little bit. 
the face-to-face -face interaction, particularly now, again, uh, with travel uh, opening up is, is just highly, highly valued. Uh, we recommend that you vet um, any partners. Um, and of course, please uh, lean on our office and resources uh, to assist in that. Again, we have offices here in Tokyo um, and in Osaka, and uh, we look forward um, to having you all uh, come out and uh, learning more uh, about the Japanese market. With that, uh, I'll close and thank you very much, guys. All right, thank you so much, Enrique, and thank you to the ATO Tokyo um, for um, helping us out. And that was great. Thank you. Um, at this time, I'd like to present Ms. Sungwa Lee, and she's going to give us a little more information. Go ahead, Lee. Hello, and hi, Gozaimas from Tokyo. Today, I would like to share with you a quick overview of the Japanese food processing, ingredient market, and distribution channels. Japanese market for the foreign or local agricultural and marine food ingredients. It's so vast and so deep with different landscapes, just like the under the sea of the Pacific Ocean. So here I will snapshot some scenes and corners of US suppliers usually come across. First of all, let us see who are the biggest US food commodities selling to Japan. As Mr. Mazon indicated, it's corn by volume, mostly dent corn and perhaps six to 7% of sweet corn included. Since the number one seller, the corn is estimated to include a large portion of non-edible volumes, we can probably count beef as one of the top US commodities coming to Japan by value. In the Japanese imported beef market, USA has about 40% market share by volume, but by value, it exceeds Australian parts. Here are the highlighted state-wise top export commodities by value from the Western US. Other than these, there are also many varieties of agricultural and seafood commodities available for export opportunities. Here are the long time sellers in Japanese market which have featured the Western US originated food ingredients. Snacks, tofu, soy sauce and miso paste, curry roux, okonomiyaki Osaka pancake sauce, blueberry butter, breads and soups. Also, the main ingredients for these seafood products popular in Japan are originated from the Pacific Northwest and Alaska. As you know, sockeye with salmon kirimi for lots of uh, gourmet bento boxes and sujiko cured salmon roe, varieties of oden and kanikama imitation crab meat made from pollock surimi and potato starch and tarako cured seasoned spicy pollock roe. Now, large volume of dried fruits and nuts from the state of Washington, California, and Oregon are featured in healthy snacks and low carb meat, so low carb meal solutions as Mr. Enrique showcased. In the 2021 ranking of the most trendy and most selling food item, lactic acid bacteria contained food snacks and drink came to number one. As you can see, variety of Northwest blueberries, strawberries, California prunes and dairy ingredients, walnuts of course, are being used for the national brand consumer products manufactured by the top-notch food and beverage companies like Ezaki Goliko, Kagome, Poka Sapporo, and QBD Rocco Butter, as Mr. Mazon mentioned also. Well, in the next few slides, I want to address some technical matters regarding the Japanese requirement to approve foreign food materials for public consumption. So please be patient with me a little bit for the next coming slides. Good news is that most of these will be taken care of by the importers, but it will be good for you to know 
There are seven major laws in Japan governing food and agricultural products, including imports. Prior to the trial, because of that, uh, prior to the trial or commercial shipment, U.S. suppliers are oftentimes requested by the importers to provide with or disclose various information, including ingredient list, manufacturing flowchart, certificate of analysis, health cert, and product specification sheets to identify each ingredient. All of them are mandatory or necessary for the Japanese authority to confirm the tariff code, product type category, according to the Japanese law and standard. Ms. Lee, may I stop you for a moment? Okay. Um, you're sounding a little, um, it's sounding a little crackly. I think yep. it may be the microphone on your earbuds. Mm -hmm. If you take the um, the wire and just kind of move it forward and hold it while you're speaking, <laughs> it should it should stop crackling. Yeah, it's just uh, it's hard to hear you. So I just okay. wanted to make sure. Is it better? Yes, much. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. 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 Sorry for the noise. Um, so, okay, so next slide. Uh, country of origin labeling is required by 22 food groups and five food items when used as ingredients in foods manufactured in Japan. Imported processed foods are exempt from the requirement. However, the country of origin of the finished product is required on the label. Starting on April 1st this year, uh, Japanese food manufacturers will be required to identify the country of origin a country or countries where the main ingredient by weight was manufactured on the label of all domestically manufactured products. This requirement applies only to processed products produced domestically. Imported finished processed foods are exempt. Uh, only by the country of origin of the finished product will they continue to be required. Here, let us see in general how the food ingredient purchase decision is made by the Japanese companies. There are three pillars. First pillar is product development, marketing sales force, who is running forefront in the market tracks, facing the end users, catching new market trends and demands. Second pillar is a procurement and purchase team who is responsible for supplier product search, cost calculation, and logistics coordination. The third pillar is a QC team, whose role in food and beverage companies have become especially important nowadays. They test, verify, and confirm if the used ingredients comply with the requirement by Japanese law and standardization, making sure the food is to be safe and responsibly manufactured. Among these three pillars, the first visitor to you is usually the procurement and purchase team who, take care, who takes care of international trade communication as well. They get activated when current product line needs more options of suppliers or new product is being developed or scouting and pre-bonding with suppliers become extremely necessary or potentially necessary. When the new product is identified and approved to be imported and marketed, QC team will be there to confirm everything complies with the Japanese laws, standards, rules, and regulations. In the final process is usually the inspection of the factory, even in, even in foreign countries. QC team reviews all the paperwork and I inspect per HACCP system, how the production line is designed and work practice organized and managed without passing this inspection, Japanese companies will not register, nor the Japanese authority will approve the food as product legitimate for public consumption. So usually the foreign suppliers do the rehearsals of facility inspection prior to the QC team visit from Japan. It also means when you hear from you, hear from your new Japanese customers, their QC team will be coming to the plant farm packing house the Japanese company is ready to place the order. So it is a part of the good news. Everything starts with the meeting encounter with Japanese buyers to get to know each other first. You have to find them and they have to find you. 
please try to discover mutually the common goals and missions for delivery of good food to the people. Then please enjoy your own way of strategy building and planning ahead through ongoing communication and coordination with Japanese trade members. So far, USADA has helped US small, medium, and large size suppliers and Japanese buyers to meet and work together for introducing and promoting these products. For example, Western US food ingredients are driving these number one sellers in categories of almond milk, pomegranate juice, fruits, granola, and before long, young chickpea. The traders have found the US suppliers through USAD activities for the last decades. In summary, buyer is not always the single decision maker because comprehensive supply chain system matters more than before and different roles functions sharing the same goals, timetables and responsibility must be synergized inside the Japanese companies. More and more food sustainability will prevail price, prices and cost structures. Trade and consumers will have to be more conscious and aware of the pressing situation and needs in terms of global warming, economic, political, and diplomatic frictions, need to protect and preserve their own national uh, local food culture. USATA will continue to support US suppliers to find the partners in Japan to maintain or build a new supply chains. There may be hurdles and challenges over the Pacific Ocean, but please know USADA programs will be available as information platform for your opportunity hunting by assisting both industry and trade members to make open and straight communications. So thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. All right, thank you Ms. Lee. Thank you both. That was great. Now we have a little time for a question and answer session. If anyone has any questions, please type them into the chat or Q&A box. And I will read them off to Ms. Lee and Mr. Maison. So go ahead and do that now. We'll give you a little bit of time to do that. I do have one question here. Will we receive copies of the presentations via email? If that is all right uh, with Ms. Lee and Mr. Mazan, I will definitely send those presentations. Um, I know Ms. Lee's is a little bit larger, so we'll need to um, make it smaller to be able to send it out, uh, but we will figure that out for you guys, yes. PDF version is okay? Oh, yes, I'm sure PDF is fine. Mm -hmm it will become lighter. Good point. <laughs> okay, so we have questions coming in here. We have, um, let's see. I work with an importer in Japan who is no longer placing orders due to high yen. How do I approach new importers without disrespecting my old importer? I'll take that one. That's a good question. And uh, yeah, that's um, it's a it's a tricky thing. Uh, I don't know what what type of um, products you have, um, but um, Christy, maybe you can uh, you can send me your email and we can look at your products and we can try to see uh, who in the in the market um, we can maybe make some connections. I say uh, I say that, though. Um, your relationship with the with the with the person or the company that you have, right? At these these are long uh, long relationships uh, that you need to consider, um, and so it's it's not very long, uh, and it won't take very long for folks to, you know, talk talk to each other. So 
but we, we can certainly uh, look at your products and, uh, and try to find um, some alternatives for you. Thank you for the question. Okay, next up is, does getting started require going to Japan for, conf for the conferences? Another good question. I think um, putting together an export, export plan um, and understanding the regulatory considerations um, is a really big first step. And so our information on the usdajapan.org website will walk you through um, several product categories, but we also have a general export plan um, that you can uh, for sure take a look at and reference. Um, and then depending on your product, um, we may be able to work with other industry partners here in, in Japan. Um, but that export plan will be, will be essential. Okay, we're getting quite a few questions, so stay with me. Uh, let's see, how can you help us for pet, pets food export from Oregon? Yeah, so Japan is uh, very known for uh, having uh, pets and um, uh, it's a very actually uh, interesting uh, segment. Um, again, I'd reference you to understand the regulatory um, considerations for pet food. Um, and then we can look at um, kind of what, you know, what your objectives or goals are from there. Um, but yeah, the, you know, Japan has the regulatory um, uh, requirements. Um, USDAjapan.org um, is a, a good first step to take a look. Great. Uh, second part of that question is, um, are the regulations for pet food same as human food for Japan? <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's an excellent <laughs> question. Excellent question. Um, I'd have to, I'd have to take a look, uh, but um, I know our, our requirements um, um, are that, you know, essentially pet food and uh, I think there were several, uh, I think instances in the US where there was um, pet food had to be made so that it was also uh, safe for human consumption. And so, um, uh, we'll, we'll need to take a look at the uh, exporter guide and, and the regulatory requirements uh, for that. Mm -hmm. So again, USDA uh, Japan, that, that org. Okay, uh, let's see. Next one is our company produced premium quality meal replacement shakes for general health and wellness. How can we find suitable suitable buyers? Yeah, so I think the supermarket trade show and FoodX, and then there's several other ones in the Kansai region in Western Japan. Um, that would be a great first first start. Um, I, I'm happy to send out the dates uh, of those trade shows, um, but th that's really our marquee um, um, event because we not only are there and supporting and making introductions to the these uh, Japanese companies and entities. Um, but if you're there, it, it just facilitates it um, in a really nice way. I would also like to say that um, Wusada does run trade missions uh, with Japanese buyers. And uh, Ms. Lee is actually our in-country representative for Japan. And she can help uh, connect you when we are doing those types of missions. So definitely, um, if you're not real engaged in your My Wusada account, make sure you go in and log in and check out the events section. And you can really find out what we're doing in Japan, uh, what kinds of activities, things like that. Um, we've got a lot of good ones on the docket for 2023. And I know we have one uh, going on next week and one left this year. So, and then uh, Ms. Lee is actually also doing some kind of outside the box uh, work for us as well, which could work for something like that too. But definitely check out your My Wusada page and um, utilize that as well. They're, they're not expensive activities there and they're very uh, lucrative. Okay, let's see. Uh, next, will the speaker's contact information be provided? Um, is that all right with you both? Oh, yes. Uh, okay. Please, please yeah, send me I an think, email. 
Yes. I think they your contact information is in your presentations. Am I right? Mm, I didn't. Perhaps, okay, uh, on my then when I send the presentations, yes. I will send the contact information yes. mm -hmm. uh, for you all. Okay, okay. Um, let's see. Our company makes premium quality steaks. How can we find buyers? <laughs> yeah, that's a, another good question. We have the U.S. Meat Export Federation uh, here in Japan. Um, you know, please, we, we can make introductions. Um, I think they have a very wide membership. Um, again, utilizing and leveraging the trade shows is just the un they're always next to our, 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 our booth, the ATO booth. Um, and so it just really facilitates um, great sit down conversations and introductions. Um, I think here, I just wanna emphasize having your guys' product specifications in Japanese um, and um, that information kind of ready uh, would be very, very uh, helpful because on our end, um, and this goes to all the companies on online that have uh, asked for uh, some assistance or information. Make sure when you guys reach out to us, uh, if you have your company's uh, profile, uh, product specifications, um, ideally um, in Japanese, that would be really, really helpful because that'll allow us to get uh, um, our contacts um, kind of ready to go um, um, so yeah, but uh, with the state question, USMEF, um, you can uh, again send us your your all of your information, the types of products you have, um, and we can make some some intro some preliminary introductions. Um, can I add a little bit to Mr. Mazon? Yes, of course. Oh, and no. oh, <laughs> well. Uh, as Mr. Mazon emphasized a couple of times, it really depends on commodity type and like pet foods and be particularly, well, uh, if I go back to the pet food questions, there are specific uh, requirements and standards. Um, usually in Japan only, usually there is a requirement only for the cat and dog, um, other type type or ever, you know, the animals uh, of the pet. Um, the, the standard and rule and requirement, it's still uh, not specified. So, um, and as uh, Christy mentioned, there may be um, pet food uh, buyer's mission uh, taking place for uh, USATA suppliers next, next year. So, and also there is a very big uh, pet food trade show. So, as Mr. Mazon said, uh, the, the first encounter usually is made through um, participation in the major food trade shows in Japan, like FoodX. And if you have already um, partners, distribution partners or importers, um, then we recommend uh, to go to supermarket trade shows. Um, and uh, for the beef, uh, I think I recommend you to find if your um, uh, beef coming from the range and uh, packing facility, which are already registered by USDA and uh, Japanese uh, government. And also I know that some of the beef Packers, well, the meat industry members are not the member of USMEF. So you should check and you can always participate in that organization, I think. So, uh, and also um, um, somebody asked if everybody has to come to Japan for conferencing. Um, I think that's a very good attitude to show to the Japanese potential buyers or existing buyers that. Japanese trade are very pleased when they see their suppliers coming to Japan in person and you know visit their customers or research on market because they take it as a great sign of their commitment and you know appreciating Japanese market as the most important you know market so but uh, usually most of the communications must can be done by emails and nowadays video conferences and you should make the buyers come first to your place uh, so that the business will proceed. So 
that's my uh, additional advice. And uh, of course, I'll be happy to answer to any questions by emails uh, after uh, Christy would share my email. Yeah, and that's a good point, uh, Ms. Lee, bringing the Japanese buyers into the US is one of the things that WUSADA does. Mm -hmm. uh, we also take US suppliers to Japan to meet with the buyers yeah. in their home country. Mm -hmm. um, okay, next question is, Will the factory where we process human food be inspected by QC from Japan? That was right after the steaks question, so it may be related. Um, you mean the uh, QC, well, processing plant is inspected by Japanese? Uh, um, will it be it? inspected by yeah. quality mm -hmm. control from Japan? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it depends on, I'm sorry for Mr. Mazon. Uh, can I just no, answer please, please. this question? Well, um, it depends on what kind of finished products, you know, uh, the US, uh, well, Japanese suppliers are targeting or trying to uh, market and sell. Um, there is only, um, I'm talking about supply chain system. Um, from the uh, supplier, from the farm to the, you know, market ends. Um, in Japan, on Japan side, there are multiple players, like, as I said, including the, the three pillars. And QC uh, is taking place only one corner, you know, like if you, if we say three, like trading companies, processors and retailers are supposing involved, it doesn't mean that each company has to do the QC. Um, only one place, usually taking care of the labeling um, for the consumer ends, um, is responsible for sending um, the QC team to verify and inspect the foreign um, plant. And actually those, once it is approved, the uh, plant or facility or farm is registered uh, officially usually, well, on corporate level or prefectural level or national level. So um, yes, you have to expect that. Actually, this is a great news when you hear that QC team from Japan will be coming. It means it is there at the final stage before placing the order. So yes, usually. And it is very thorough. It's very closed and very confidential, you know, things. So usually people do not realize that this step will be taking place, but you should expect um, that will take place all the time. Um, uh, Enrique, anything to add from you? No, that's exactly right. Um, nothing, nothing else to add there. Okay, this next question, I think I can answer, but I do need a little help. Um, when does the FoodX event come up on the WUSADA event page um, and the registration? So uh, FoodX will be, we are doing FoodX in 2023. Um, and basically it will come out later this year for registration if everything's okay um, in Japan at that time. I actually do have the project, one of the project managers that I, I used to do the show here, uh, Chelsea, are you there? I'm allowing you to talk. If you are there, um, can you let us know when you think you would like registration released this year? Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Awesome. Um, so we actually have not gone into contracting yet with the show organizers. That usually happens around August, so probably in the next few weeks. Um, and then from there, we'll kind of take a look at the budget and how many booths that we think we're going to have. And usually we have the announcement out around September. Um, so I would definitely just keep an eye out for that um, in early fall. We usually wrap up recruitment um, around October, late October, early November. So look, in, look at that time frame this fall. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chelsea. Yeah, um, that'll be a great show. And hopefully Japan will be ready for Americans to come out and show them new stuff. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mute you out again, Chelsea. Thank you. Okay. 
Okay. Are there any opportunities for private label retail packaged food in Japan? We can pack small or large retail package for customers. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think uh, Japanese consumers are um, food, pro you know, food processors, manufacturers are always looking. Um, I think especially uh, kind of during this weird COVID time, um, I think they're really going to be eager to see what's what's new. And I'll just, uh, again, reiterate uh, type of type of products and um, Again, some of the considerations you'll need, um, specifications, uh, all of that um, is going to also be um, key as well. Uh, but again, uh, if 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 you could send me your information, um, that that'll be a big help. And then um, we have we work with a number of uh, supermarkets, um, very large one. You know, they range. Um, and I would also just um consider uh, again that the, on the travel part of it um there's you know other other prefectures other areas uh other major uh tourist hubs uh here in japan um and i think those you know depending on the products um they could they could potentially do very well okay um the next question i think i can um, kind of reiterate what you said before. Um, Sue said, can you please make us the introduction? And I was just going to say, um, you can contact um, Mr. Mazan. You can also contact Wusada about our um, missions, either inbounds or outbounds. And I think we can all help with those in introductions, if I'm understanding correctly. So next one is... Um, we have successfully sold our dried, I think this is jujubes or jujubes to Japan and followed the required protocol. Uh, for example, lab results, proof of certifications. However, it was for a small customer. What would you recommend as an efficient way to find new customers? Yeah, that's wonderful. That's great. Um, so um, if you have Kind of the specifications of of your of your jujubes, or um, uh, send that send that up send that over to us, and um, yeah, we can we can start to potentially uh, look at um, new uh, uh, new segments uh, and introductions for you. Awesome. Um, do you provide translation services? I know that during our Wusada missions. Um, uh, Ms. Lee usually engages interpreters um, either in the uh, in Japan or here, depending on where the buyers are coming. So yes, we do provide translation services for our missions. And then, um, go ahead. Did you want to say something? Yeah, here, here on our end, yeah, we have a staff. Um, we have staff. Anytime that we sit down with with uh, uh, any contact um, or you guys, um, yeah, our staff will be, uh, someone will be sitting down um, with you uh, to make sure that um, any translation uh, that's needed can, can, can be facilitated. Okay, and then how do you find good partners? Will Wusada help? Yes, of course, Wusada will definitely help and so will, it sounds like the ATO in Tokyo. Um, any el Anything else to add to that, Enrique? Yeah, uh, just uh, Osaka in the Kansai region also is is there and um, okay. is also willing to support. Um, like I mentioned in my presentation, um, a lot of wonderful companies in, in Osaka and the Kansai region. So um, between our offices in Tokyo and Osaka, I think you guys um, uh, are in good are in good hands. Great. And then, uh, do we need to register the products that we intend to export? No, yeah, I and I'll let um, I'll let Lee speak a little more about mm -hmm. this. Okay. Well, we register in Japan or the question. Well, usually that's 
In Japan, she says. In Japan, well, so this is the importer's actually job, work. Um, so, um, well, it doesn't have to be registered, uh, but depending on the commodity, uh, you know, the, it is registered per HS code. So all the legal requirements, you know, following up, following, you know, applicable to each HS code. So, well, um, how to say, as a Im imported uh, commodity, yet it has to be identified and uh, registered, well, recognized uh, with the specific HS code. But as a food ingredient, you know, for the, on the commercial level, uh, the importers uh, will tell you what has to be done, mostly by sharing the information and um, uh, which I just kind of addressed in our, in my uh, presentation, so. And then it looks like- One uh, thing, if I may oh, add, sorry, is go the, ahead. Uh, I'm sorry, the one thing I'll just add also is that uh, food additives um, is uh, something that you'll really need to pay attention to. Um, and then I'll uh, ask everybody to just please go and check um, the uh, usdajapan.org website because um, there are some some key aspects there that you'll uh, you'll need to um, understand. Um, yeah. Uh, follow up question to that from another person actually is how long does the product registration usually take? Mm. Well, I mean, again, on a on a how to say. Uh, as an import commodity or is that, uh, well, registration? Well, I, we need to be very specific about what registration, you know. Uh, yeah, so the exporter, yeah, you guys, that yeah, was... it, so, so the exporter will provide everything that the importer is gonna need, you know, the packaging, right. mm -hmm. uh, the labeling requirements, all of that is gonna be provided to, to your, 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 uh, your contact in Japan and they will then as the as an importer responsibility uh, um, submit all of that um, to the appropriate regulatory authorities uh, here in Japan. Um, so um, I feel like uh, just looking at closely um, at the exporter exporter guides um, again for the specific products that you guys all have um, but just making sure that you, you provide all of that to, to the uh, importer that you're working with. That's going to be very, very key. So there is already a kind of list of um, feasible, you know, like whether well, product, the commodities, which are recognized and approved as a feasible um, item. Um, so basically, the decision and judgment is made by the Japanese authority. Okay, uh, like if you a supplier want to ship, for instance, um, cooked uh, cooked shellfish, for instance, you know, uh, then by providing, as Mr. Masson said, by providing to the importer all the information like manufacturing process and uh, ingredient list, all these things, then. Japanese authority will identify this is um, applied to the HS code, you know, tariff code, la 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 la. And then um, it means it's not registration, but it's a kind of recognition and approval, you know, process. So it's, it's something which takes place on uh, um, trading, you know, um, communication. Um, and then um, if that ingredient, specific ingredient, will be um, decided to be featured in Japanese commercial food products as finished products, then um, the QC team or the, 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 the finished product maker in Japan side will register that uh, food ingredient, you know, as approved feasible product um, for public consumption, you know, edible you know, on their side. So these works will be done by Japan side. So, 
uh, your suppliers do not have to uh, really worry about getting them approved and well registered in advance, if that's a question. Okay, we're going to take last two questions. One is really simple, and then we're going to stop for the day. Um, okay. This person would like to know, will all recipients receive a follow-up with the presentation contact information? And that answer is yes. And mm -hmm. then the final question is, um, do you mean ATO Tokyo will provide staff to interpret for free? Oh, sorry, I just uh, responded in the you chat. You responded, but, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but just for the whole group, um, yeah, I mean, we, we try to do that and, and support as best as we can. We have uh, three marketing specialists here and then uh, two in Osaka. Having said that, during the trade shows, um, and obviously there's uh, so much engagement and interaction, uh, that stretches our capacity a little bit. Um, and so I think that's where, um, you know, Wusada um, and potentially contracting um, interpretation services um, could could also come in, um, but we try to do the best that we can to make sure that uh, mm -hmm. we we take care we take care of our of of our companies. Yes, okay. and uh, yeah. Wusada will definitely provide translation services at in our pavilion at Foodex. Mm -hmm. So um, definitely be looking out for that. I did want to mention about Foodex. Um, it will the activity will be posted in um, at least uh, probably around mid-August online on our events page. Go in and favorite that event, and then you'll be sure to get the email just as registration is released, if you favorite it. So um, I think that's all we have today. We are a little bit over. Thanks, um, guys, for staying on a little longer. Um, really enjoyed this today. Thank you, Ms. Lee, Mr. Mazan, and thank you everyone for joining and have a fantastic day. And we'll get those presentations sent out next week, probably. Oh, one more thing. If you still have questions and you didn't get your question answered, you can email them uh, to either of these folks here or to directly to Wusada. Um, I am Christy at Wusada.org. Uh, my name is spelled right there. I'll type it in the in here real quick. And it's K-R-I-S-T-I. So you can always get your questions answered next week if you have a few more. Okay. Thanks again and have a great night or Thank morning. You. <laughs> right. Thanks Thank everyone. everyone. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye.